Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Edward Fernandez, President and CEO of 1031 Crowdfunding, to discuss investing in the real estate market through fractional investment ownership. It is great to have you with us, Edward. Welcome to Trade Talks. Jill, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. You got it. Explain to us what Delaware statutory trusts are. How were they the conduit to these investment slices of real estate? Sure. So a DST, and we use the term DST, is a way to own fractional interest in a piece of institutional quality real estate. Think of a DST like a living or family trust, where there's a trustee that's managing a trust for the beneficial owners of the trust. And so a lot of investors are looking to that fractional ownership that are kind of a little tired of the tenants, the toilets, and the trash, and really don't want to end up paying the taxes. So they do a 1031 exchange through a DST. So it's essentially a portfolio of different residential properties all, all in one is what it sounds like. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's DSTs that have portfolios in them. So you could buy a DST that has like 20 properties in it. You could buy a DST that has a single property in it. But all these DSTs are institutional quality type real estate, like apartments, senior housing, student housing, self storage. And so for as little as $25,000, you can end up buying a 50 million or owning a piece of a $50 million property while still satisfying your exchange. How does it perform relative to other asset classes? Well, it's all, it's, it's really relatively the same, right? So through COVID, you know, uh, senior housing, student housing, hospitality and office, right, got hit really bad, um, just like it did in the normal market. But now that we're uh, post-COVID, right? All those things have come back now, except for office, because now people are still working from home. But it's re- it's really relative to the same. The only difference is control, right? A-, a DST, you're giving up control. And if control is important to you, then the DST may not work for you. Well, it's better than getting those calls at midnight when something has broken. I'll agree with you there. How would it work in a portfolio? Is it uh, a complement to a 60-40 or is it something you'd look to diversify your your the income part of your portfolio? Well, so yeah, so it'd be an income part of your portfolio. So think of the DST. Well, the DST has two different strategies, right? So if you're actually investing in multi-tenant like apartments, senior housing, student housing, and self-storage, think of that as a dividend stock, right? You're getting a stable cash flow with a greater potential of appreciation. If you buy a DST that has maybe an Amazon distribution center at or Walgreens or Dollar General, think of that DST as a bond. You're just going to get your principal back and you're getting that guaranteed coupon. How liquid are these investments? You had mentioned 25000 is the minimum. What if you want to pull your money out? Is there is it like a closed-end fund where there's a certain amount of time and the money has to be in there? How easy is it to move your money around? Yeah, it is a closed-ended fund, right? So there's a definitive time of how much money is being raised. And these DSTs are illiquid, right? So if you own a piece of $150 million property and you've got $25,000 in it, you need that property to sell in order to create liquidity for yourself. So, you know, you don't want to put all your money in these things, especially if it's illiquid. Um, And so the DST is really a hold period between three to six years on average. And then the DST liquidates and then you're in another position to do another exchange and defer your taxes. So you have to be an accredited investor to participate in this investment. You do. Absolutely. So 1031 crowdfunding. Uh, facilitates investments for accredited investors and also non-accredited investors, because not only do we do DSTs, but we also have REITs, partnerships, and, and no programs. So we everything we do is in real estate, but the bulk of our business is for exchanges. On the flip side, one of the advantages is the, the fees associated with buying a home, appraisal, title, survey, all that is done for you. Correct. Um, that's the reason why we can satisfy an exchange as quickly as five days is because the closing has already occurred 60 days ago, right? Where if you did a traditional exchange, you got to do all that, right? And then you've got to get an offer in, you've got to get that offer accepted. And and so it makes it very difficult to satisfy an exchange where a DST is, is a box with a bow on it and you can go as deep as you want, or you can go as shallow as you want, but literally we can take care of your exchange as quickly as in five days. And you mentioned the tax advantages of the DST. What about expenses? Can you write the depreciation of any of these assets off? Oh, absolutely. So because you're a beneficial owner of a trust that's on title of real property, you can get depreciate the asset. You get to write off all your expenses on your Schedule E. The DST has to have stabilized assets in it. 
So you're getting cash flow on the 15th of every month. And unlike other investments, when the DST sells, the investors get 100% of the upside. All right. Interesting. Appreciate the insight, Edward. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Jill, thank you so much. Have a great day.